hey guys so last week i showed you the process of overclocking the intel 13600k but then i received a comment from roberto that is curious to under voltage for better temperature control so in today's video we'll be heading down that road i'm quite optimistic there is a significant margin for undervolting this beast and after testing stability and gaming it seems like i've hit the sweet spot for the maximum undervolt without compromising the performance all right before we dive in i'd like to take a moment to shine a spotlight on the motherboard i'll be using for this video which is the azrog z790 pg sonic edition i quite dig it for its colorful looking and since i'm a sonic fan i have a sweet spot for it i want to note that most of these techniques i'm about to use are present in different ports by azrog as well as other manufacturers and if you get any under Voting issues feel free to write in the comments or on the channel dedicated discord server i'll do my best to help you out all right with that being said i hope you are as excited as me to see it in action so let's get started so here i'm at the bios settings and you can see i have the version 7.2 which is the latest one as of this date you can see in this easy dashboard stuff like cpu temperature dram information storage configuration fan speeds and your cpu cooler type also stuff like instant flash for updating the bios version and fantastic for fan tuning so you can see some easy stuff however what we need is to go to the advanced mode by clicking on f6 or clicking on this button so here we are at the advanced mode and you can see it's more specific and has more settings such as OCT weaker, advanced tool and stuff like that. Go to OCT weaker and from here go to CPU configuration and by default the CPU P core ratio is set to auto. Put it on all core and right here 52. By default it's 51 so we are doing sort of overclocking for the P core. For AVX2 ratio offset, we are going to do a negative offset of 2 to have 5000 MHz. Because AVX2 workloads are more stressful for CPU and the CPU tends to have higher temperature while operating in AVX2. And as for the CPU E core ratio, set it from auto to all core and from here instead of 39 which is a default, put it on 41. So this way we are doing also an overclocking of the E core while doing undervolting. As for the CPU cache ratio, put it to 46, by default it's set to auto. For BCLK frequency, I've set it to 100.25 because in HW info, the values weren't in whole numbers. So I had to do this work around by increasing the BCLK frequency from 100 to 125 to have a full numbers like as you can see here. As for put performance mode, I have it on turbo performance. By default, it's max non turbo performance. However, it's not going to change it much. Also make sure to have ring to core ratio offset to enable it. this way you will have a more stable cache speed per frequency. Also if you are trying to undervolt your CPU using Intel XTU tool you will have to disable undervolt protection here. Go down here and make sure to have Intel speed step, turbo boost, speed shift and thermal velocity all enabled because they help a lot by reducing the temperature and saving power. For CPU TJ Max, I have it on 100 but you can set it however you want like it can go from 62 to 115. Leave all stuff to default and go to DRAM configuration. If you have an XMB supported RAM, load your profile. I have three here. The fastest one, which is 7200 with those timings. However, on 7200, it wasn't working in either stability test. It was failing every time. So I had to reduce the speed from 7200 to 7000. And it has been stable since then. I also used lower timings like this ones instead of 38. 44, 44, 105, I reduce them to the lower profile. So in this way, I have lower timings with good speed. Also go down here. And make sure to have ASRock timing optimization and ASRock DRAM frequency optimization enabled. Also MRC training response time to slowest and MRC training on warm boot to enable it. This way, whenever you restart your system from Windows, you will still get a successful training for RAM. Because otherwise, for me, I was getting an issue whenever I have them disabled. When I do a reboot, it fail on RAM training. Also, I have MRC fast boot to disable it. Exit the DRAM configuration and go to voltage configuration. And here I have CPU core cache voltage set to offset mode and offset voltage is set to auto. I'm not going to mess with it. However, we will do another technique later on. For CPU core cache load line calibration, I have level 3. In Azrock motherboards, the highest level is 1 and the lowest level is 5. So for level 1, the V core voltage will be the higher and the level 5 will be the lower. I recommend using level 3 because it's balanced between good overclocking and not 
not very hot scenarios. So in order to get level one and two, you will need to use the fixed mode. As you can see, if I go back to offset, you can set up to level three, which is good anyway. And leave all stuff here to auto. Now it's time to do the under volting using fever or full integrated voltage regulator configuration. This way we are going to create our curve for lowering the voltage per frequency. As you can see here, we have 11 points to select from. And first, I want to show you that I have core voltage mode set to adaptive and extra turbo voltage set to auto. As for the VF offset mode set to selection, by default, it's legacy. So legacy is like global and selection is a newer version, which shows you more points to select from. Like you can create your own curve this way. Also, you can do the retrieve feed information. As you can see here, in real time, they are changing. This way, it could support you to understand the voltages being requested by your CPU. But keep in mind that these VID values for VF points are for reference only. As stated by ASRock, the runtime VID for a ratio depends on CPU quality, CPU loading, and power setting. So they are just for supporting and understanding the vo voltages being requested. So here I have for the lowest ratio, which is 8, I have negative 500 and the highest one, which is 52, negative 50. So we are doing all negative offset for the voltage. This way we will have a lower temperature later on. Feel free to copy those values, but if you get any issues with them, feel free to write me and we'll try to do them together. Usually you will see the most critical points to change are from 43 to 49. So those three points are mostly critical for undervolting and also overclocking. So those points aren't, aren't much important like because the CPU didn't need much voltage at this ratio. However, from 43 and later on, it will request more voltage. Therefore, if you have a very low voltage, it will crash or cause stability issues. As for the E-Core L2 voltage modes, keep it on auto and the ring voltage, I have it here on 1.2. And the system agent voltage is set to 1.2. This depends on your RAM configuration, but for me, this voltage is very stable. So now that we are done from fever configuration, let's go to the advanced and I want to show you some stuff. First up, I have CPU C states enabled for all of the C state support, like the enhanced hold state, CPU C6 state, and CPU C7 state. However, I have the package C state support disabled, which is a default actually. So uh, even ASRock has disabled package C state support, so I keep it this way. However, those ones are great for lowering temperature, helping your CPU to gain full speed and yet keep it cool. Like, you know, also keep intervaltrization disabled. I usually don't use it because I don't have a virtual machine. So it's better to have it disabled, to make more sense. And keep all the stuff as default. Go to chipset configuration. Here in the chipset, make sure to have the primary graphics adapter set to PCIe if you are using a discrete graphics card. And make sure to have above 4G decoding and CAM. Clever access memory set to enabled, which are the resizable bar support. So make sure to have them enabled. And here I have the virtualization, which also here called VTD to disabled. And the rest of stuff are optional. So you don't need to copy them. So now that we are done from the chipset configuration, we don't need anything of those ones. Go to tool. Here you can update your BIOS in stand flash. If you have the latest version, like if you have a newer version than this one, make sure to always keep your BIOS version updated. And here in the hardware monitor, you can see some temperature and insights, fan speeds, stuff like that. Here I have the CPU fan set to performance and the CPU fan, which is a water pump in my case, to full speed. So here you can change your fan speed and uh, type like the setting. In the security, you don't need to change anything. Here on the boot, you can see I have fast boot set to ultra fast and the boot failure guard count set to two. By default, it's four. This actually means the number of attempts to boot until the system automatically restore to default settings. If you mess up with settings, it will revert back to the previous ones after two tries. So now that we are done with doing all stuff, I want to show you for under volting. You can save the profile here in the OCT Wicca tab. Click on save user default. Here I have the previous OC profile that we showed in the last video. And here in the second one, I have this under volt. So make sure that you save it if you find it stable and working well for you. Now it's time to save the changes to confirm all and before heading to benchmark and testing, I ask you guys if you find my content useful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to stay updated. I really appreciate your support and I'll do my best to offer you what's the best. Thank you. So now let's head to benchmarks and stuff like that.
see you there. All right, let's start with the Cinebench 23 benchmark test. As we are seeing, there's a subtle difference here, about a 3% higher multi-core scores and for the single core, it's an even smaller change, around 1% difference. However, when we go over to HW Info, there's a lot to talk about. For Core Vid, the maximum is 1.211, compared to the previous 1.271. The max clock speed is 5.2 GHz for P cores and 4.1 GHz for E cores. Temperature wise, there's a cooldown of about 6 degrees, and power consumption is at 147 watts, versus the earlier which was 164 watts. And ultimately, the V core has seen a reduction too, but we are far from calling it a stable undervolting. Let's head over to IDA64 Extreme and doing the stability test, we'll check it out. So now let's check over at HW Info. Here we will see that the core vid is now 1.27 versus 1.259. The clock speed remain high as before, but this time around the temperature are down by 8 degrees. Bore consumption has also shows a difference. It's 120 watts versus the previous 138. As for the V core, yep, you guessed it. It's also lower. Now things seem to be looking up, right? Well, hold on your seats because we are going to push it even further in the OCCT test with an AVX2 stress test. Thanks to the negative offset we've applied to the ratio in AVX2, the temperature have fallen by a whopping 14 degrees and power consumption has dropped by about 40 watts, as we are seeing here. Now for the newest addition to my CPU test, we are trying out Y-Cruncher. I've recently heard about it from our community over at Reddit. Rumor has it that it's quite the challenge to pass all those tests of it. Thankfully, it has passed all of them with flying colors. Now let's head over again to HW Info and would you look at that? The trends are consistent, we are seeing more power saving and less temperatures. I've got to say I'm pretty amazed and satisfied with these results. It looks like we've successfully tamed the 13600K, giving it away from the 80 degree hood. Now let's check our undervolting at gaming, shall we? First up, we are going to wear the Viking helmet and invade lands in Assassin's Creed Valhalla.
as you can see, we've managed to bring down power consumption and the score has gone up a bit as well. It might not be a huge leap, but every little bit counts, right? Next, we are hitting the street of Night City in Cyberpunk 2077. Again, we are noticing the similar trends as well. The score has edged up a bit as well. Lastly, we'll command troops and battle monsters in Gears Tactics. Again, we are noticing positive changes across all metrics. Higher FPS, lower power consumption, and lower temperature. So there you have it. Our undervolting profile seems to have paid off quite handsomely, making it possible for even a mid-tier cooler to handle the 13600K without thermal throttling or losing performance. I sincerely hope this video proves useful for you. I'm also eager to hear your thoughts, so drop them in the comments below. Until next time, stay cool.